Hello everyone, finally I completed my full review of the ICOM IC705. This review is complete and in-depth, so if you already own the ICOM IC705, maybe this can help you go through the manual because it's not the full manual but I cover pretty much everything you need to know about the 705 so stay tuned for that and I've been using the radio for the several months before I made my review so I'm pretty familiar with it and uh, hope it shows in the video so let's start right now before we turn on the radio and proceed with the review, let's go very quickly on the outside of this unit. First, you will have, okay, we will go through the button later on, but you will notice that there is a front speaker that is very loud. It works very well. I, I really enjoy the fact that they put that in the front, okay, but that is the first thing you will notice that will be different. And you can see it's not very big. And there's nothing on top. But in the back, you have the battery pack, which use common ICOM HT battery pack. Okay, so that is very simple. And there's two models. This is the 272 and there's a 304. I think it's a new model that it's have more capacity, but this is the one that came with the radio. In the bottom, you have a camera mount which is very useful because you can use that on a tripod or anything that use a camera mount. This is a good thing they did that. They did that on the Icon i7100 as well. And you also have some other screws that you can use probably some more accessory in the future to, uh, to, to mount the radio on something. So this is the bottom. If we go on the side, you will notice that there's only one antenna port and the antenna port is for all band. This radio is covered from 6 to 160 meter in HF and also VHF, UHF and its general coverage. It covers in RX from 30 kilohertz to 200 megahertz and 400 to 470 megahertz and there's only one antenna port. So this is a QRP rig and I guess it would have been complicated to have two uh, antenna port. Uh, that would have been great but I guess there was some compromise, but since there's only one VFO, so it's not a big of a deal. But you, if you use that in your shack, uh, you will need a duplexer if you want to separate, a, let's say, a vertical VHF UHF uh, between your dipole for HF. Well, you will need a duplexer, although it's very rare because uh, the duplexer usually include HF uh, and the VHF on the same port. So uh, it may be hard to find. I think MFG make one, but I'm not sure. Okay, but it's just, this is something to keep in mind. Here you have the microphone input, okay, uh, for the audio, while well, you have the speaker and the mic. And the speaker is 3.5 millimeter common plug. And then you have the 2.5 for the mic. And right beside there, you have the micro SD card where you can save your configs, uh, save your repeaters list you can download from the ICOM website, which will uh, let you find with the GPS coordinates the nearest D-Star repeater near you. So, uh, and you can do firmware upgrades and many things, but the main thing is that you can record your QSO with the timestamp, date, uh, modes, frequency, everything. So you can actually do the logging after your event or when you go out in the field. That is very awesome and I, I used that in a previous video as well to save the QSO and I used the audio save internally into the radio instead of my camera audio and I did that uh, doing the, the assembly of the video at the end and it's, uh, it worked well. Right, right, a very good low idea. Propagation is uh, it's not bad. Normally at this time of the day the band is closed. Very, sounds very good. Here you have the ground connector. There's also a little clip that you can install that's in the bag with the small leg, okay? That I went to look for after <laughs> I opened up the radio, uh, a little while after even. And this clip is for securing your microphone connector so it won't break if you pull accidentally on the microphone wire. So this is by default keyring uh, clip, but uh, you can use, this as my tip number one of this video. If you ever went to Dayton or if you have um, a co-card okay, that you use in the past 
you know, when you go in the Amphis and they give you a, a sort of a necklace with the, and you can attach your, your, your pass. Well, this is the kind of clip you will find on it. I found it, this one on my last Dayton trip card okay, that I kept. <laughs> and I used that clip because I don't want to have the mic permanently attached to it. And it's complicated to turn this around. So I use this clip and I can remove it very easily. Okay, so I don't have, but I can still secure it without, you know, uh, doing that for minutes, trying to turn it around. So I thought I will give you that tips. On the other side of the radio, what you have is a micro USB port right here. This can be used to connect to a computer, to program the radio, to do digital mode. So this is the USB port of the radio. But this USB port can also charge the battery. Hold on a second. So if you're out in the field and you have a power pack like this, okay, and you connect that to the micro USB port, hold on a second. You will find, check here, it is charging the radio. And if you turn it on, it will show you that it's actually have USB power, see external, and then you have to charge it. But keep in mind that you only, you will still have five watt, even if you're plugged into something that gives you a good amp hours, okay, on the USB. It will not give you the 10 watts like 13.8 volts will do. So this is something very well taught. And if we go back here, you will find the 13.8 volt air. On the 13.8 volt, you have 10 watts and everything else is 5 watts if you're not connected there. Okay, that's it. And if you want to charge a radio, if you connect the 13.8 volt, it will charge the radio in 2.3 hours and it will supply the power to the radio. If you use the USB with a 2 amp power pack to charge the unit, it will take 3.2 hours, but the radio needs to be off for that time. And uh, if you want to charge quicker the battery, well, you will need the desktop charger from ICOM for this type of battery, and then you will charge it in two hours. So if we continue to the port here, you have the key port here for your keyer, okay, for CW. And then you have the tuner and the amp connection, so the tuner, and it's all 3.5 millimeter, and the scent and um, ALC, the PTT and ALC for an amplifier is right here. I use that with my one kilowatt amplifier and I get with the 10 watts with the 13.8 volt connected, I get uh, around 340 and it works well. So it, it just, you know, um, it, it can key the PTT and everything. So it's very, uh, very simple to, uh, to set this up. Now let's go through the radio. From left to right, we will cover all the button, but we will also cover all the menus. Uh, this radio is pretty compact, so there's a lot of sub-menus, but it's, you will see that it is, it is very intuitive. So there's no issue about that. So you, you will see that it, it's, it's quite easy to operate anyway, uh, even though there's a lot of features and there's a few buttons. The first button you will find is the twin PBT. If you press on this, you can toggle between the two and then you can just change like this using the knob. And if you do a long push, it will reset to the default. Uh, you also have the power button. If you do a long push, it will turn the radio off. But if you do a short push, it will actually just shut down the screen. That means turning off the screen to save on the battery, but you can still operate the radio. You will have an orange indicator right here telling you that it, the radio is still on and the screen is off. If you do another short push, you will have the screen back again. Here you have the Vox button. The Vox button, in, when you're in a voice mode, let's say USB or FM, you can activate or deactivate the Vox. If you do a long push, you can actually adjust using the touchscreen like this and the multi-channel knob here. You can actually do the fine tuning of the Vox by doing a long push here to bring the menu. Short push will activate. If you're in CW, well, this will adjust the break-in, the full break-in or off. If you do a long push, you can adjust the delay. You see, this is very intuitive. Let's go back into SSB. Then you have the call channel. If you program the call channel, you can recall it with a short push on it. If you do a long push, you will go in digital repeater or DR mode. That will bring the radio in D star. And what you will have here 
is if you have a GPS signal, let's say, here it's not lock on a GPS signal because it, the satellite that you can see up here is flashing. When it is steady, that means it is lock on a GPS signal, but that's not the case because I'm inside in the garage right now. But if you click here, then you can select the near repeater. If you upload the repeaters list that you can download from the ICOM website and you put it on your SD card and import it in the radio, it will actually be able to let you know where are the closest repeater to you in order. That means if you are in a hotel room and you, you're in a region you don't know, you want to find a, the nearest repeater to you, you can do that, especially if you're part of portable. Then you do this. Now I don't have any GPS signal. That's why it doesn't work, but it still worked because the last time I did it, that was the nearest repeater. And you just select it and you will uh, synchronize the frequency of that repeater, which is very useful where on, on the move. But that's not all. This radio is just like the ICOM IC9700. That means if you go into this menu, the second menu here, you go in DV Gateway, you can actually configure uh, a, a network to a gateway uh, if you have access to a gateway. My local club gave me access on the module E uh, to uh, their gateway and I'm allowed to use it to reach other repeaters that are connected on the ICOM uh, type of network okay, for D-Star. And then I can go in terminal mode. As you can see, there is a cloud up there okay for the internet and there's no s meter anymore if i have the mic plugin and i try to transmit i will actually reach that repeater directly using the internet without transmitting or receiving any rf but that's not all if we go back into this menu and you go back in normal mode and we go in access point mode now let's go in uhf let's say we will enter 433 275 okay and i'm in dv mode and i have a portable ht that do d star and i want to use the 705 as a hotspot well actually i can synchronize that frequency in d star on my portable radio and then i can reach this radio in rf and then this radio will go to the Wi-Fi, go to the internet, to the repeater, and then the repeater to the internet, to the radio, via the Wi-Fi, and then retransmit the RF to my HT. So this becomes a not spot. That is pretty, pretty cool. Let's go back in normal mode. So this cover for the, as you can see, it's all mode, all band. Let's go back to even D star on HF. Let's go back in SSB. So here you have the AF button. The AF button is the volume, that's it. But they incorporate a push button and then you can select with the touch screen the RF gain and adjust it, the squelch and adjust it. That is two other very important feature. And when you push it back again, it becomes the AF gain. So you have three function available very quickly and easily from one button. This is a very efficient way to do it. Congratulations, ICOM, on that. This is very nice. So you have one very useful button, not complicated. Uh, I hate when you have to push another button to, to, to crank the volume. So this type of setup, I don't like it, but this is very nice. Okay, so let's go now to the uh, touchscreen. The touchscreen is exactly the same touchscreen, the same size, 4.3 inch diagonal. It's the same size as the ICON IC7300 and the ICON IC9700. And this is full touchscreen with the band scope and waterfall. And you have the band scope, the spectrum scope, sorry. Uh, and it, this is full touchscreen and there's a lot of things you can do with it. So let's start with the mode. If you want to switch mode, you click on the mode here and then you have all the mode right there. So that's pretty easy. Then you have the filter. There is three filter, one, two, and three. You just toggle it by pushing on it. On top, you have the battery indicator. You have the satellite. There's also Bluetooth that is not activated. You have the uh, Wi-Fi, the SD card. You have the UTC and local time that you can click on it. And then you have the frequency right here. But let's go into the filter first. Do a long push on the filter. It will bring this menu up 
and from here you can actually personalize the filter. So filter one, mine is set up to 3.6K because I like to be able in SSB to listen widely because most people now transmit wider than, than, uh, than 3K. So I set it up to 3.6 and I'm gonna show you how to do it. This is a, another tips that I can tell you. I think it's tip number two or three, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> so uh, in this video, I think it's the second one. So filter one is adjusted to 3.6K. How I do that is actually using the VFO and increase the bandwidth to 3.6K, but it's from minus 300 to 3300, and I want from zero to 3600. So I turn off the bandwidth here, and what I will do is adjust it with the twin PBT. So it will be 3.6K like this. That's how I do it. So that was for the filter. Now let's go to the band. So this, you click on the frequency on the megahertz here. Then you can select the band from 160 to 70, uh, 160 uh, meter to 70 centimeters. So this covers HF, VHF and UHF. And you just select the band and it will change the band. And as you can see, it is all mode on every band. Okay, all the band have the same mode. And let's go back here. You can also enter a frequency directly. You can also synthesize the radio broadcast. Okay, so you can use that. This is cool. You have the airband as well. There you go. Okay, so you have the airband. And then you have the general coverage and contrary to the ICOM IC 9700, this one is general coverage. It can actually receive signal outside of the band, okay? Like uh, the two meter band, as an example right now, okay? So this cover pretty much the uh, frequency and band switch. You also have here the possibility to toggle between memory and VFO. You have uh, as well, the meter, now it's in SWR, ALC, hold on, compressor, voltage, current, power, SWR again, so you just touch the screen and it change. You have the scope, and the scope you have a menu here, there is two menu, with the last option stay the same, it's the same option on both menu. So you have the span here from 10 kilohertz to 1 megahertz just like this 7300. You have the possibility to hold the scope. You have the center or fix. Okay, I'm outside the band, hold on a second. Okay, so center or fix. And you have the possibility to expand the scope for a bigger view. And then you have the second menu. You have the REF level, the speed, the marker, and this menu again. If you do a long push here, there is tip number three, then you can adjust the filter center is the default. So when you want to tune a frequency and you see a signal on a waterfall, you need to be center on the signal to be... The band is not very good today. Okay, there's good signal. So you need to, by default, it's going to be center. But me, I prefer to have it carrier point center. That's mean in, in the lower side band, I will be, the, the line will be on top of, uh, on, on the right of the signal and in USB, it will be on the left of the signal. So it's easier to synthesize. So this, uh, for me, uh, I change that right away when uh, I uh, receive my ICOM rig. So this is set up for that carrier point center. So this cover pretty much uh, the scope. Here you have the menu. There is two, but we will cover it at the end. Here you have the function, two menu as well. The function, that's where you're gonna find the basic function of the radio, like the noise blinker. So if you wanna turn it on, you click on on. And if you want to do some fine adjustment on it, you do a long push, it will bring back that menu. You select the one you want to adjust and you adjust with the multi-channel right here. 
pretty simple. And it's all, they're all like that. Here there's preamp one, preamp two, preamp off. You do a long push, you have the attenuator. Okay, so you, when you receive that radio, try different things on the menu. Then you can change the AGC here from slow, mid, fast. But if you do a long push, you'll be able to adjust it, personalize it. Then you have the notch, same thing, auto notch, manual notch, off. Then you put the manual notch, you go like this. You can do adjustment, you see, all very simple. Split, Vox, compressor, TX bandwidth. This is preset in the menu. You set your, your bandwidth for, for wide, etc. Uh, et so you, you, this, you select it from there, monitor, same thing. You put it on and you can adjust it after. Then you have the duplex, depending on the band. It will have the default if it, it is set by default in the radio. So it will tune like in VHF, it will be uh, uh, automatically minus uh, 600 or plus 600. You have the max TX battery, uh, power on battery. So you can say, me, it's 2.5 watt maximum when I'm on battery, not 5 watt, but uh, by default it's 5. So this is the function menu. Here you have the scope. You press once, you have this, then you can make it disappear. Then you bring it back, disappear, and you do a long push, and then you have the expanded view. You do another long, uh, hold on, long push, and then you do, there you go. And you click expand, and then you have this view. Okay, so this is the button scope. Then you have the quick, quick button. Um, well, there's some stuff like the meter selection. It's actually uh, selecting what is the meter, but you can do with this with this touch screen like I just showed you. Uh, GPS information. There's some the weather channel pre-programmed. There's also the weather alert in there, and you can also record on the SD card your QSO and the audio receive audio. But by default, this radio, when you push the PTD, it starts recording if you have an SD card formatted into the radio. If you do not wish that to happen, because this is useful in the field, because it saves the frequency, the, the, the mode and everything, and the timestamp in UTC. So this is helpful, so you can do your log after uh, the visit. But uh, uh, you can turn that off uh, so we, because if you're in the shack and you press the PTT, you don't want to record all the time. So, but by default it's on, but you need to turn it off. But you can do it manually here, and I will show you in the menu how to turn it off later on. So, that's cover the quick menu. Then the exit, always exit if you click here, like this, like this. So, this is the exit button. Then you have the multi-channel button, which is very important. By default, it's kilohertz. So if you do this, it changes the frequency. Then you have your VFO. But if you click here and there's an arrow, then you will have one kilohertz tune on the VFO. But keep in mind that this one is always on kilohertz. When it says kilohertz, if you push on it, you have the main menu here, very useful, you click here, that's how you adjust the power. Since I'm on battery, the radio is capable of, to go up to 10, white, 10 watts on 13.8 volts, but on battery, it is a maximum of 5 watts, so it's 50%. That's why I cannot adjust more than 50%. Select your mic gain, so you can turn it on and off, and when selected, you can adjust it with the Mitchie channel. You push on it and it goes away. Then if you want the RIT, you can see RIT on here. That means the multi-channel will be the RIT. You can reset by doing a long push. But if you do a long push here, you will have the TX, T, TXIT if you want. <laughs> then the same thing. You can do that. Another long push. You come back to the RIT. And to turn it off, you do this. <laughs> you just push again and it's off. Then you have the XFC, very useful to listen. If you are doing split, you listen to the transmit frequency. But if you go in UHF like this, and I go in memory uh, with, a, with a repeater, and I have the squelch, if you do if, if XFC, it will open up the squelch and listen to the uh, repeater's entry frequency. Okay, so that is the monitor uh, uh, button, if you wish. Uh, let's go back to, oh, I didn't want to do that, sorry. Go back in VFO. Then you have the, 
VFO, okay, and go back to here, like this. Okay, then you have the MPAD, which is a quick recall memory. It's a temporary memory up to five. So if you do a long push, it will store this frequency. So, and if we toggle up to five, then we will have this memory. Okay, so it's, it's a quick way to, to toggle between two frequency when there's a QSO or a net and you want to toggle with it and it's momentarily. So you have a quick memory here. You can scan the frequency with a long push. Okay, or you can go in memory and if you press scan, you can scan all memory like this as well. Hold on a second. Yeah, okay. Oh, my squelch is on. Hold on, let's go. Like this, so scan the memory now. Okay, so that's, if you press scan again and it stop, let's go back in the 20, on 20 meter. Then you have the auto tune, which uh, let you uh, synchronize the CW signal, okay, for, for the tone, so it will uh, automatically tune. And then you have the speech here. <laughs> Sorry for the noise, but the, the audio of the speech, okay, that telling you the frequency, if you are using this feature, it is mixed with the audio of the radio. When you are on the squelch, it's not too bad, okay? Hold on, let's go in FM, okay? Now it's okay. But I found out that in the menu, there's a way to set the level of the speech higher than the radio, so you can actually hear it correctly. So there is some setup you can do to improve that feature. So keep that in mind if you are uh, using this type of feature. Then you have the possibility with a long push to lock the dial or another long push to unlock the dial. If we go into the menu, there is two and the end set is the same. That doesn't change. So we will cover at the end. Sorry, and we center the radio. Then you have the scope, which is the same thing here. You have the audio scope that you can activate and what's fun with this radios, you can still have you can still have the waterfall and the spectrum scope unless you expand the audio scope like this. And the audio scope you can actually attenuate. You can hold, you can adjust the level to have a better view and the time. Okay, and you can expand like this. Go back to the menu, you have your voice memory, you can record your voice for calling CQ and you can recall it from here. But if you're in CW, you will have the keyer recording and recall here as well. So, but in CW. Here you have the meter. The meter, you can still have the waterfall, like I mentioned. <laughs> and you have all the meter in one view, which is great, depending if you're doing tests, whatever. If you want to see that, that's very useful. You have the possibility to scan the frequency, okay, in this wide span, and to check your SWR. So when you're out in the field and you're tuning an antenna and you want to be able to go 20 kilohertz up or down, well, you can actually center your tuning to be able to move a little bit on the side. Well, this feature will let you know where you are at uh, in the center, but you need to key the PTT uh, to, uh, every time to uh, complete the, the scanning. Then you have your memory that you can edit here. You have your scan, you have the memory pad, you know, the five memory you can recall. That's where they are. You have the recording and the recording, you can start, play file here, start the recording, stop the recording. And that's where there is the PTT auto recording on by default. That's where you turn it off. On the second menu here, it's mainly a D star configuration. You also have the, uh, the, the picture, okay, that you can send and receive. Uh, the same, the, it's the same feature that you have on the ICOM IC9700, so you can exchange picture between any 705 and 9700. Then you have the GPS information, and we will go to the menu. In the menu here is standard as the ICOM menu. 
So you have the tone control, you go in TX or RX, you go in the mode and you adjust the width. What I was telling you in the menu here, TX band width, okay? So you have wide, mid, and narrow. That's where you set it up. Right there, you go in TX, wide, mid, and narrow. Okay, so you have the setup. You can adjust the bass and treble, and you can do that on all the available mode, including D Star. Uh, you also have here the function. That's where you have the beep level and this type of function, power saving, maximum on battery, uh, all kind of uh, feature. Usually, for me anyway, this by default it's okay. You can charge using USB power. Input, I don't remember, is that the default? But if you connect to a PC, it can charge a battery. Uh, you also have my the setup for the D-Star. So my station and the TX message. Uh, more DV set here for D-Star. You have the possibility, the, lo the QSO log, okay? And uh, the history. You have the connector. In the connector, you will have many things that you can set up here, but for me, the most important thing is the modulation input. That means when I'm in data mode, this radio is as the RSBA1 software from ICOM into the radio, integrated into it. So I can connect using the Wi-Fi and the network, I can connect to that radio and do digital mode without any wire connected between the computer and the radio. To do so, I need to use the input of the WLAN for the Wi-Fi or wireless LAN. And uh, if I want to do SSB after that and do voice mode, well, I need to use the mic. So what I do is I put the data mode in WLAN, the data mode off, it's the mic and the USB. So what happened, okay, let's exit that. When uh, I'm in data mode, now that means the audio is coming on from the Wi-Fi network. And when I turn it off, then the audio will come from the mic. Otherwise, you will take the mic. If you set it up to wireless LAN, then you'll take the mic and there will be no audio. Okay, this is a common thing that happens when you, you, you switch between digital and mode. So that's how to set it. That's another tip. Now remember, how much tip it is, but uh, that's another tip to make sure that you are able to, to uh, using the correct mode, you will have the right input for audio. So we have other things to set up here. The display, you can adjust the backlight, that, uh, the screen saver, things like that right here. You can also have your call sign when you turn on the radio. That's where you set up the unit to change in between metrics and um, uh, Imperial, I think, <laughs> so between uh, MPH and kilometers, let's say, and temperature between Fahrenheit and Celsius. You have the time set. This radio can connect to the internet, so you can use the NTP server. Here I use this NTP. With the NTP server, I'm able to set up the time correctly. And if you using the internet and the offset here, I think mine is... Uh, Minus five, that was the summertime. Okay, so now the time will be correct. If you set the UTC, then you will have the UTC time here. So if we go back to the menu, and go back to time, by default it has this server and I have the GPS time correction, so we cannot correct because I don't have a GPS signal in the garage. You can do a sync here with the NTP. So that will synchronize with the internet to get the correct time and date. There you go, now the time is okay. Okay, like this. Then you have the Bluetooth that you can use an application on Androids and transfer pictures. Didn't try that yet. You can pair your Android phone or tablet with this device using the Bluetooth. That's where you do it. The wireless LAN, that's where you set your wireless LAN, your connection, okay? And you have the remote setting for the RSBA1 software. That's where you set your port. So I have different ICOM rigs, so I have different port for each of them to be able to connect remotely. 
that's where you set it up then you have the SD card you can save your setting reload your setting import like the repeaters list if you put it on the SD card the repeaters list that you download from Avicom that's where you import it in. you can export as well pictures then you have others the information most importantly is the firmware version of your device that you can find here you also have uh, the reset which is important you can do a partial or a full reset this pretty much covered the ICOM IC705. This concludes this video. I hope you did enjoy. If you like, don't forget to do a like. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and click on that notification bell to be notified as soon as a new video is online. Talking about a new video, well, my next video will be about the ICOM LC192, which is the backpack that goes with the ICOM IC705. So stay tuned for that because I will demonstrate how I install the Comet vertical antenna on it and how I arrange uh, everything in the backpack. On that, I'll say 73 and catch you some other time.